If you're struggling to stay consistent with your workouts due to family and work commitments, I'm gonna share nine things that you can do right now to change that. Hey mate, haven't seen you at the gym for a while. Where have you been? Man, I've just been so busy with work and the kids and family. If that sounds familiar, you're not alone. I literally help hundreds of people every week to overcome those same challenges and achieve their health and fitness goals. The hacks I'm about to share with you could be life-changing if you're serious about getting healthy and fit. All right, bro, time to work out. All right, man, I'm psyched, let's do this. First is to get clear on why you wanna work out. What is the reason that you want to get healthy and fit? Now, if you do this exercise where you say, why do I wanna work out? Well, I wanna lose weight. Why do I wanna lose weight? Well, I wanna look better in my clothes. Why do I wanna look better in my clothes? Well, I feel self-conscious when I go out. Why do I feel self-conscious when I go out? If you keep doing that until you get to a point where you can't go any deeper, you usually come to an emotional driver, an emotional reason why you're doing it. And it's very important to get clear on this before you go through the other steps. And if you're not crystal clear on why it is that you're working out, why you wanna be healthy and fit, then it's gonna be harder to get the rest of this stuff done. Next, we want to remove anything that gets in the way of you doing your workouts. And to do this effectively, you really need to prioritize everything that you do in your life that can get in the way of working out and your workouts. So remember that the word prioritize means prior to. So when you create a list of priorities, you're not really understanding what the word prioritize is. When you prioritize something, it means you do it prior to anything else. So I wanna give you an example of how I had to go through this myself. When I became a father seven years ago, it was a really challenging time for me because for the first time ever, I just wasn't in control of my time like I was used to. My wife and I had created a certain you know, way that we ebb and flow within our relationship and we still get the time to do the things that matter to us. And all of that was all of a sudden gone. You know, you've, you've got to deal with this new entity, this new child, and you have to work out, you know, what you can do and everything just changes, you know? And so what I was forced to do, because exercise and health has always been right up on my priority list, but all of a sudden I didn't have the time to do everything I wanted to do. I didn't have the time to sit down at the end of the day and just, you know, watch some Netflix or watch a movie. I didn't have the time to play some video games with my friends on the weekend, but also to be prioritizing my health and fitness and saying to my wife, hey, you know, I'm going to the gym or I'm going to be coming. Well, I mean, I owned a gym, so it's more like I was saying I'm coming home later from work than what I normally would finish. But I couldn't be doing all of that and also all these other things that I love doing. So I had to prioritize. I had to write a list to become very clear on where health and fitness, where my workout sat on my list of priorities. And it was absolutely above Netflix. It was absolutely above playing video games. It was above socializing with my friends and having a beer because the way that I justified this for myself was I thought, in three years time, am I going to be happier if I got to watch all of the Netflix and all of the streaming shows that I wanted to watch and all of the movies that have come out, but my health and fitness has suffered because I haven't been going to the gym and I haven't been taking care of myself, or am I gonna be happier if I'm in great shape, my health and fitness is thriving, but I haven't been able to see all those shows and movies? And of course, for me, that answer was really obvious and it was really simple. A harder one for me was gaming. I've always been a gamer and I love playing video games. And so I had to really decide what's more important to me. Is, my, is having a good relationship with my wife more important than video games? Absolutely. Is it more important for me to be healthy and fit? Yes, it is. It was more important for me to do that. So once you have that priority list, you then have to make the really tough decisions, which is you say, I am not going to do these things, even though these are really important to me, they're not as important as health and fitness, which means I don't do them in a day or a week unless all of my health and fitness checkboxes have been ticked off. Next is to create a set of rules for yourself. Now rules are gonna be different for everybody. So I have rules like, my rule is that I go to bed before 9 p.m. every night because I wake up at dawn every day and I know that even if I go to bed late, I still wake up early, but I wake up really tired and I don't have a good day. So that's a rule for me, I don't stay up past nine. Another rule for me is that I don't drink alcohol. That was a really hard one for me because I used to enjoy having a beer after work and 
over time I stopped doing that and I was only drinking on the weekends and I used to really enjoy, you know, when we went out to a restaurant, I'd have a, a couple of drinks. But I've just learned that it affects my health and fitness negatively and it's something that I don't do. So now that's a rule for me. I don't drink alcohol. Another rule is that I don't eat sugar. I don't eat refined sugar like chocolate and sweets and things like that. I don't eat uh, a lot of grains, so I won't eat gluten and I won't eat a lot of bread and things like that, o almost none. Now rules are gonna be different for everybody, but once you come up with your set of rules, you stick to them. So you come up with rules that are going to resonate with you, that matter to you, and then stick to them and follow them. Next is to turn off notifications and avoid distractions. This is something that very few people do. And this is uh, something that my brother Yanni and I learned from a business coach, a business mentor that my brother was working with many years ago now. The idea that you turn off all notifications on your phone. So the only thing that I get notified for on my phone is a phone call. If my phone rings, then of course it rings and it lights up, but there is nothing else that happens on this phone that will make a beep or that will light up the screen because every single distraction takes you out of flow. And if you wanna be productive in any area of, of your life, and this can go far deeper than just for health and fitness, you really want to be trying to get into a state of flow. And research shows that when you look at somebody over a one hour period, that they get pulled out of a state of flow many, many times. And I can't remember exactly how long it takes. I think it takes up to eight minutes to get back into a state of flow. So you work to get into a state of flow. Everything's going really well for you. You're in the zone. You know, your work's happening for you. And then your phone goes beep, beep, and you stop and look at it. And you, oh, that's right, I've got to do that later. You're not going to deal with it now. You've just been reminded of something that you have to deal with later, but you've been pulled out of flow and now you've got to get back into it. And I found for myself that in my workouts, my workouts were taking way longer when I was looking at things on my phone or when I was getting distracted by notifications. And in your workout, there, is, there should be nothing that else that matters, you know? If it's that important, then somebody will call you and you'll get the phone call. But emails, um, social media notifications, text messages, any of that, I don't even get notified for text messages. A lot of people go, wow, that's crazy. But I wanna choose when I wanna check my text. I don't want somebody or anybody really to be able to have the choice to say, hey, I'm going to take your attention away from what you're doing now so that I, so that you can listen to what I've got to say. I don't want anybody to have that power. So literally every single app in my phone, I don't get any notifications from. And then I decide when I go, okay, I'm going to go and have a look at my message at my text messages now, or I'm going to look at my emails, or I'm going to look at social media and see what notifications have come up. That's a really, really big one. Because when you want to, when you go into your workout, you want to get in flow, you want to get in the zone, and you want to be able to get a 60 minute workout done in 60 minutes. Next is to have the conversation with your spouse. For any of this to work, your spouse has to be on board with you as well. If they're not on board with what your health and fitness goals are, there's always gonna be this push-pull and this tension within your relationship, which is really unhealthy. If you implement what I'm teaching you in this video, I guarantee you, your life is gonna change. I really mean that. I'm not sharing these hacks because I just pulled them off a, you know, an internet search. These are things that I've progressively implemented into my life over the past decade and a half that have profoundly impacted my life. So when you have this conversation with your spouse, you, you want to be telling them what you're planning on doing. You know, I'm doing this. I plan to stop playing video games on the weekend, if you may. I plan to stop doing this so that I have more time for the gym, but I'm not eating into our time. So I want to come to an agreement that this is when I'll go to the gym. And then when I get back, I'll do X, Y, and Z. And this is when we'll have our time. So, you know, it's about offering something to them, offering the time that you're going to be able to have with them, but also getting them to agree with the time that you're going to have for yourself for going to the gym. And hopefully you've got a spouse that wants to go to the gym as well. And so this becomes a two way street. I think that's really, really important, but you want to come to that agreement so that you're both on the same page and you both know, you know, that, that this is an agreement that you've made and it's something that's really, really important for not only your physical health, but your mental health. Next is to put your workout in your calendar so that it is an appointment just like anything else. Now, if you're a professional, 
and you have meetings, if a meeting's in your calendar with a client, that is a meeting that you are there for. You, hopefully you're there for it early, a, a few minutes early, and you're not the person that walks into meetings five minutes late. Your workouts should be exactly the same. It's not something that is, oh, um, I plan on going to the gym after work, but it's not in your calendar. And so all of a sudden, you know, work goes for an hour or however much longer. And then by the time you look at your time, you think, oh my God, I've got to go and pick the kids up and your workout doesn't get done. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about that it is in your calendar and just like any meeting, your, you know, when you look at your calendar, what have I got to do? Oh, that's right, I'm going to the gym now. You look at the time, bang, you're out the door and you go to the gym. Personally, I think for professionals, for working professionals, if you can get your workout done in the morning, I've, I've found in my two decades of being a personal trainer, the clients that had the greatest success were the people that trained with me in the morning. Um, but that said, you know, you've got to work it out with your spouse. You've got to work out what's going to work for you. But put it in your calendar, make it an appointment. And an appointment is something that you go to every time. It's not negotiable. It's in there. It's, it's rock solid. Next is to be realistic with how long you can work out for. So decide, I can work out for 40 minutes, I can work out for 60 minutes, I can work out for 90 minutes. You'd be incredibly surprised at how much you can get done in 60 minutes. We do strength and flexibility training in 60 minutes. It's an incredibly effective way to train. If you wanna know how we do that, you can click or tap the screen there and grab that guide. That'll really help you. You definitely don't wanna to go to the gym without a plan because then you have to sit there at the gym and work out what you're gonna be doing. You wanna to go to the gym with a program, with a plan, knowing exactly what you're going to do. And you have your time set. And when that time finishes, when that's 60 minutes or whatever you dedicate for yourself, if you're like me, I do maybe 90 minutes for my workout but when that time hits, you stop. And if that means that your workout is cut a little bit short, that's okay. Because the stress that you might experience from going, ah, oh, I didn't get these last couple of sets or last exercises done is not nearly as much as the stress that comes from bleeding into your next appointment, from being late for what you plan to do after the gym. And you don't want that because then workouts become a stressful experience. It becomes something that's within your schedule that you associate with stress. So that's really, really important. If your workout is meant to go for 60 minutes and that's what you budgeted for, you stop at 60 minutes. And for those of you that are doing the UMS, that are working with me with our online personal training, your UMS 60 minute workout, if it takes you a little bit longer to get done, but you budgeted for 60 minutes, just stop the workout short. It doesn't matter if you don't get those last couple of sets done, but it really matters if you start associating exercise with stress. And then when you start looking at your workout in your calendar, you have a stress response to it because you think, oh my God, it always takes me longer. So stop your workout when you intend to stop it. Now this is a really big one, and this is probably maybe what a lot of people thought this video was gonna be about, so pay attention to this one. Plan for the busy times. You might have listened to all this and gone, oh yeah, 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 blah, 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 but my life's just so busy and it goes ups and downs like this. I get it. It's the same for everyone, it's the same for me. I'm a fitness professional. I run my business from my home office but I still have times where it is really, really hard for me to work out because my brother and I are working hard on a project and we have to get it done and we have to get it launched and put it out there. And time just becomes tough to get to the gym. And so what happens is I recognize those times in advance. You be realistic with yourself. You get this new workload. Your, um, your, your kid's sick and you know that you have to stay home for a couple of days or, or your spouse is sick and you've got to do the, the, the drop off and the pickups from school that you don't normally have to do. Be proactive about that, not reactive. So pro, a, a proactive approach to this would be you look at your, your schedule and your calendar. You look at when at these things that you have to now do because you've got this project that you're gonna be working late on with work or you've, you've got to pick the kids up from school when you normally don't have to. And then you look at how that's going to affect your gym time and you come up with what the minimum amount of exercise that you can do realistically in a week is to keep yourself going, to keep that momentum going, but that's gonna be manageable. And that might be if you're somebody that goes to the gym daily and you normally do a 60 minute workout at the gym, you might look at your schedule and think, 
I'm not going to be able to do more than two workouts this week. I'm only going to be able to do it on that day and that day because those are the only two days that I don't have to pick the kids up from school or drop them off or whatever it is. And I'm only going to be able to do 30 minutes because I, that's all the time I'm going to have when I get there. And so be proactive about that. And so what, what we teach people in the, in the UMS, the Unified Movement System, is that you have a minimum workout and a goal workout and an ideal workout. So your goal workout is just what you do normally every day, but your minimum workout is what you do in these times. Now for me, my minimum workout is that I just do my warm up and just my primary exercises. So a good strength training program or a good strength and flexibility program, you'll have your warm up, your primaries and your supplementaries. And the primaries are where you do the majority of the work. It's the hardest exercises, the toughest exercises. So in an upper body workout, that's where you're doing your pull-ups and your shoulder presses. The supplementaries are where you do all your rotator cuff work and your um, biceps and triceps, like the easier exercises. So for me, my minimum workout is I do my warm-up and then I just do as much of my primary workout as I can. So primary workouts are normally about five rounds, five sets. Um, if I only get three sets done and I look at the time and I think, oh man, I've got to go, that's fine. But what that does is by having a minimum workout that you've thought about, that you've gone into the gym with intention for, it means that you keep the habit going. It's really great for mental health. It still gives you that endorphin hit and it stops you from losing the momentum that you've gained or that you've worked so hard for in your gym and in your workouts. So plan for those busy times, be proactive and don't just be reactive because being reactive is where you just go, oh my God, I've got this really busy time. And then you just react to your boss telling you that you need to you know, work longer hours or this deadline is tomorrow or this deadline's next week and you've got to get, you, you know, you need to work on the weekend. You're reacting to your spouse getting upset at you because they're sick and, and they, you know, can't pick the kids up to school and you're telling them, oh, I, I completely forgot about that. Like you, you be proactive about all of that. You just accept that these things happen because if you've got kids, if you're a professional, if you've got a mortgage, then you know that life never goes like that. It's always like this. So you plan for that unpredictability. You plan for, okay, life's throwing some curveballs at me. I'm going to deal with that proactively now because then when it's easy, then when everything sort of levels out, it just becomes so nice and you're in this blissful state where everything's just working for you. And next is to practice neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the ability of neural networks in the brain to change through growth and reorganization. It's when the brain is rewired to function some way different from the way that it used to function. And I can assure you that so much of what goes on up here is programming that isn't doing you justice. It's not in alignment with who you want to be. And I've actually made a really, really good video on how neuroplasticity affects health and fitness and how you can use it to your benefit. So if you just click or tap the screen, you can check out that video. Make sure you grab the Strength and Flexibility Blueprint. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, you'll get uh, notified when all these great videos come out. And I'll see you in that next video.